We've got an update on a possible medical breakthrough in treating sickle cell disease. This painful condition dramatically shortens the lifespan of 100,000 people in this country, mostly people of color. I have a cousin that has this disease. I know exactly what this does. Today, the FDA is expected to approve the first gene editing treatment to repair the gene that causes sickle cell. Chief medical correspondent Dr. John LaPook has followed experimental gene therapies from the early days of clinical trials. Now, he reported for 60 minutes on a gene therapy that corrects patients' faulty red blood cells. This morning, Dr. LaPook shows how the new therapy changed the life of a 15-year-old teenager from Connecticut. From the time he was a baby, pain was at the center of Johnny Lubin's daily existence. It was really just a pounding pain in my back, like my lower back, and it'd really be hurting. Johnny had inherited a gene for sickle cell from each of his parents, Fabienne and JR. When you heard that your son had sickle cell genes, what went through your head? You know, it was devastating as I found out and discovered more about the uh, disease. Pain from sickle cell can occur anywhere blood circulates. That's because red blood cells, normally donut-shaped, bend into inflexible sickle shapes, causing them to pile up inside blood vessels and prevent the normal delivery of oxygen throughout the body. Complications include bone deterioration, strokes, and organ failure. Did you read about lifespan of people with sickle cell? Yeah. What'd you learn? It didn't say that they live very long, like, like not past, was it 40? I, I actually did want to live past 40, you know? For more than a decade, Johnny was in and out of the hospital. I would count how many times I had been in each room, and at one point I had been in every room on the floor. At that time, we thought we were going to lose him. JR, you thought so? Absolutely, and that wasn't the first time. We felt like he suffered for so long and so much that we wanted to try, you know, anything. In the past, that would have meant correcting those abnormal red blood cells using donated bone marrow. As an only child, Johnny had only about a 15% chance of finding a match. But then, the family learned about a cutting-edge clinical trial to edit a small number of the billions of letters in Johnny's genetic code and relieve his symptoms. No donor would be needed. They did explain that it's, yes. a, it's a trial. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they said, uh, you know, it's risky. First, stem cells were removed from Johnny's bone marrow, and he was given chemotherapy to help wipe out the abnormal cells. Then, in a laboratory, the gene editing technology called CRISPR was used to increase the amount of a protective form of hemoglobin, a protein that picks up oxygen from our lungs and delivers it throughout the body. That protective form usually diminishes after birth. The cells were then infused back into Johnny's bloodstream. The thought that you could use your own cells, edit them, you don't have to depend on a donor, I think is pretty incredible. Dr. Monica Batia is chief of pediatric stem cell transplantation at New York Presbyterian Columbia and Johnny's doctor. You're reprogramming your cells to produce fetal hemoglobin. And it's been widely known that those who have higher levels of fetal hemoglobin tend to have less severe symptoms of sickle cell disease. As an investigator in the CRISPR trials, Dr. Bhatia was well aware there was no margin for error. You know, you're changing somebody's DNA, so obviously you want to make sure that the corrections you're making are, are the ones you want. What do we got here? Um, this is the calendar. October 4th was Infusion Day. We like to call that my second birthday. After five weeks in the hospital and six months out of school, Johnny was living a whole new life. When you saw those cells that had come originally from your body but were engineered now mm -hmm. to be new and improved, go into your bloodstream. What went through your head? I thought that was pretty cool, how I have like new cells. And I honestly hoped, you know, I could get, you know, some superpowers from it, you know, like genetically engineered something. Have, have you tried any of this yeah, stuff? You tried I, like? I, oh, I've tried, yeah. You know, <laughs> I fell on my back three times trying to climb the wall like Spider-Man. So it's just saving your life. Yeah, yeah. Just that. Yeah, just that. That's a pretty good superpower. Yeah. <laughs> you know, his doctor said, He's, you know, everything looks good. He can go and live his life as a normal kid. Did anybody use the word cure? Um. <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We, we do. For CBS Mornings, I'm Dr. John LaPoo. Oh, we like amazing. this family. Don't you guys already think oh, that, awesome. that Johnny already has superpowers? Right. Dr. LaPook says this. He reports that patients will have to be followed long-term before the experts can call this a cure. Gene editing 
is expected to cost several million dollars per patient, and it may not be appropriate for everyone with sickle cell. It would also not prevent the gene from being passed down to future generations. But I love Johnny was thinking maybe it would give me some kind of super, that's such a boy thing. It I is. love that. He got home, he's like, family. hold up, wait a minute. Yes. Let me see if I got a little something, <laughs> well, something. He, he seems to understand how amazing and special yes. it is to be alive at a time when you can reach inside the body and change the instruction yes. manual for that body and make a fix, it's make a it, edit. It. It's I wild. marvel at medicine. Yeah. Thank you for cutting edge clinical trials. Yeah. Wow. And, and Gail, you said in the beginning he already has superpowers he because does. he fought through this. Yeah. That Johnny, just shows how strong he really is. We want you to Live past 42, Johnny. That's right. That. That's right. All right.